episode nine, a dual episode with me and special guest Megan McCarthy, and we're going to be talking about cooking straight from the garden and all things fun in the kitchen today on Cultivating Guts. Hello, it's Tiffany, and welcome back to Cultivating Guts, a podcast where we discuss gardening, homesteading, gut health, and following our intuition. I am so excited to be back with you guys. I've had so many insightful moments and ideas about really important topics that I'm wanting to share with you on this podcast. And today, we are also simultaneously video recording this podcast so you can catch it on YouTube over at youtube.com forward slash Tiffany Hinton. And as always, if you want to say hello, we would love for you to like and subscribe the podcast on the the platform that you are listening to. And if you take a screenshot of that recording and send it to me at tiffany at gfmomcertified.com, I will send you our four-day Hacking Your Health Gut Detox Plan. Um, Today's episode is super, super fun. It was just such a joy to record. I'm recording this intro about a week after I recorded the episode. There's been a lot going on in life. And I was looking back now, so excited to talk to Megan. I hadn't talked to her for probably three years. And we just dove right in as if we hadn't even missed a beat. Like we just continued our conversation from before. We talked about her career at the Atlanta Botanical Gardens, where she is the chef that cooks from the edible garden. We talked about uh, preserving your herbs at home. Is the refrigerator the best? Is a jar of water the best? So there's a secret there that she shares with us. We talked about recipes and just how you can bring the flavor and the, the benefits and just the life of the things that you're growing, especially the herbs in your backyard or in your plants or on your patio into your kitchen and create so much joy in your mouth. And so super excited to jump right into this episode. I would love for you to repost and share your favorite part of this episode with Megan McCarthy on Instagram at GF Mom Certified is who you can tag. And I am grateful to you and all of our amazing listeners who help us to grow the podcast and share it with more people. And before we go into the show, here's a quick word from our sponsor. So I'm super excited for our sponsor, Holistic Wellness. It is a CBD company that we found uh, actually online during 2021, and we've been using their products in our house, our family, myself, our girls. Uh, I even gave some to a friend of mine and her for her pet, and it is truly an amazing product. The uniqueness that Holistic Wellness delivers is that it's pre-portioned servings in a broad spectrum CBD in a portable beverage stick. So you could actually take a package, you can stick it in your purse, you can, you know, pack it in your suitcase, whatever you need to do. But it's also in a stick that, like I said, is pre-portioned. So every grab-and-go stick contains 10 milligrams of CBD wellness, and they have a proprietary blend in its water-soluble, their hemp extract, which is also very, very unique in that you can put it in water, you could put it in juice, you could put it in another liquid, it completely dissolves and it's truly amazing. The other thing that is really, really awesome about the Holistic Wellness is that they have different blends intentionally. So this beauty blend has collagen in it. So it helps your nails, your skin, your your different parts of your body that need a little extra boost. They have a stress blend, which has lemon balm or you might be more familiar with what's called Melissa. And it is relaxing. It is also amazing. But if you're actually looking for something to relax you to go to sleep, they actually have a sleep stick. And in the sleep stick, it has a little bit of melatonin to help with your sleep along with chamomile, which is shown to help relax the body. They also have a digest blend for those that are listening to our podcast that have stomach problems, complaints, bloating, just issues with digesting, and it contains papaya and turmeric, which are great for digestion, Uh, and it's awesome as well. I like this one. This is probably my favorite, the uh, Digest Blend. It's an orange package. They also have an Energizer Blend that has turmeric and ginger in it, and the Energizer Blend 
is great if you need to pick me up in the afternoon, like you hit that three o'clock low and you don't really need to reach for caffeine. You just need something to pick up your body. They have a 10 pack that you can order on their website. And what's truly amazing is that for this holiday season, we have a special coupon for our listeners and the code is GFMOM, so G-F-M-O-M, and it saves 25% off your order. That is like unheard of really to get 25% off your whole order. You can utilize this by going to the Holistic Wellness website. We've got the link below in the show notes. And I'm super grateful and excited for our brand new sponsor, Holistic Wellness, and to be able to offer you a great CBD product that is organically grown in a greenhouse, never touches soil. It's actually grown hydroponically. And it's combined, like I said, in unique blends with herbs and plants that have additional benefits for your body, whether it's helping you go to sleep or it's helping you aid in digestion or there is, like I said, the collagen or it's the helping you relax or relieve the anxiety. And so super excited. Again, the code to save 25, 25% off your holiday order is GF Mom, and we'll have the link and the code below in the show notes. Can I share with you a secret weapon for thriving through the holiday season, thriving through life, and just keeping my gut in check, right? This is Gluten Away from Just Thrive. Uh, I love their probiotics. I found them about 10 years ago. They're a female-owned company uh, based right here in Chicago. And this uh, Gluten Away product that they have is a combination that is my go-to for every meal that I eat out, all of my travel, whether I'm on an airplane or in a car, or even if I'm going to a friend's house and I'm just really not sure about the cross-contamination. This help keeps, helps me keep my celiac disease and Crohn's disease in remission. And when I pair this with their probiotic each day, my gut is truly thriving. I am, have painless uh, stomachs. I don't really have cramps anymore. I'm regular, which is awesome, right? Nobody really wants to get constipated. And I know that I have a healthy gut colony of good bacteria living in my microbiome. Just Thrive's probiotics are a unique blend of powerful digestive enzymes. Their probiotics are designed to support optimal digestion and protect against hidden sources of tummy troubles like gluten. This gluten away product has the enzyme protease in it, which is scientifically proven to break down the gluten protein to make it uh, digestible, to make it less uh, abrasive on the gut. The resilient probiotic spores support the complex and complete digestive process and help me alleviate inflammation in my body. Our whole family uses Just Thrive's probiotics, their products, and their gluten away, even my girls. You can bake with their capsules by opening them on the probiotics, the gluten away enzyme. Like I said, I take it anytime we're eating out. I take it at restaurants, at people's houses. Um, even put it in my morning coffee, right? You can open it, add it to your coffee if you're not sure about the creamer or something else. And with the probiotic, you can do the same. You can add it to your coffee. Did you guys know that spore-based probiotics can survive warm temperatures even? This is how it allows us to bake with them. They can cook up to 500 degrees. And this means you can even add them to the probiotics to your morning pancake batter. Uh, we have a special, special community discount code just for you from just Thrive Probiotics and their family at Just Thrive. And so the code GFMOM, G-F-M-O-M, saves you 15% off your total purchase at their website. We will add that to the show notes. Uh, we would love for you to add a bottle of Just Thrive Gluten Away and a bottle of their probiotics to your cabinets in your kitchen and also to your purse this season so you have it with you anytime you're eating out or you're at a friend's house or any celebration or holiday meal. And thank you again, Gluten Away, for being our podcast sponsor. And with that, we're going to head right into the show. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cultivating Guts, the podcast where we discuss gardening, homesteading, gut health, and just following our intuition. And I'm so excited, as you heard in the introduction of this episode, to be talking with Megan McCarthy today. She has been... I think in my life for maybe seven years, give or take, we've mm -hmm. run into each other in the past at gluten-free expos and then at live events. And it's just, just always inspirational, funny. And she was originally from Chicago and now is in Atlanta. So 
Uh, <laughs> Megan has what I think is one of the coolest jobs, many, many of her jobs, but one of the ones I think is very cool is she works for the botanical gardens and she gets to walk around and pick things from their edible garden and teach people how to use that to create flavor and food and just joy in their tummies and in their mouths. So Amazing. Megan, do you want to take some time to introduce yourself? Well, thank you. That is so, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're inspired. So that's, that's my uh, whole intention to inspire people to get in the kitchen and uh, create recipes based on what's growing in the garden, kind of like from mother nature and build it up from mother nature. And, you know, um, I, I always say that mother nature would never play a dirty trick on us on purpose. So <laughs> all those fruits and vegetables that grow in the garden, in your garden, in, in the, in the land, wherever, uh, we, we just need to consume more fruits and vegetables on a regular basis. Um, and that means more than just buying them and putting them in our fridge. <laughs> they got to go in so, our mouths, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's another step there, cooking it or, you know, fork to mouth. So, <laughs> But we, we, yeah, we need to, we need to step up our game. I mean, you know, if, if the last two years haven't, haven't been, uh, you know, signal enough uh, that we really need to um, take into account our health and wellness and every day, um, there's something you can do every day uh, to do that. And it doesn't have to be like slaving over a hot stove in the kitchen. So um, I just, uh, there, there's so many opportunities to eat well. Um, there's, we, we know there's plenty of opportunities to not eat well. Uh, and that means, you know, being gratified, satisfied, um, have our body digestion work, um, just all the, all the moving parts within our body need to kind of connect and, um, just, uh, and, and get the most out of our nutrients that we can, just like we try to get the most out of life that we can. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And, and so that I think is one of the reasons, like even myself, it's like go back to, to growing the plants and we can talk a little bit about this, but when they're in season and they're at their peak, right? When the tomato is mm -hmm. bright red versus green mm -hmm. or orange, mm -hmm. um, the amount of nutrients in there is so much higher. Yeah. Well, it gives it, mother nature, um, you know, ripens and sweetens and full flavors our food force. I mean, what are we doing for that? Nothing. We just go to the store and buy it or, you know, but if we can get in the garden like that, you are going to be so much more connected to your food. Um, I've had over, so I've been at the botanical garden for over 10 years and, uh, you know, summertime, we do have winter here in Atlanta as well. So um, <laughs> uh, we're not alone in Chicago. <laughs> no, no. It's just uh, your zero is our 50. So <laughs> I think you guys may get a little bit more ice than we ever do, but yeah. 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 And, and nobody knows how to handle it here. So. Um, anyway, uh, when, when you are growing things, being more connected to that food, you're more likely to use that food. And, uh, and especially for kids when they see where it comes from. I, I mean, I've, I've taught a lot of kids over the course of time and, and, uh, you ask them where, you know, strawberries come from and they say the grocery store. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, before that, you know, so it's kind of like, well, yeah, come again, you know, keep going. So it's, um, we've just been so disconnected from it um, and therefore not introduced to it. I mean, the, the flavors and um, the, the availability of what we have um, and what we can grow. Uh, you know, we have a little longer growing season here in the South um, and we grow more or uh, more okra. You grow Oprah. We grow okra. No. Um, <laughs> um, but uh you, you know, so it could, just because in the summertime, we get a lot hotter, uh, more muggy weather. Yeah. So um, different things just grow in different parts of the country. Um, so much of the food comes from the southern half of the hemisphere, or, I mean, the United States. And, and then the lower half of the hemisphere, Mexico, um, South America. And then just like, if you can keep it local, um, you will identify it with it, especially if you saw that from seed to stalk to leaf to vegetable fruit, whatever. I mean, it's they're your babies. They're your babies. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And 
as you were talking, um, last year we had the awesome opportunity to do homeschooling and my girls <laughs> got to study like things that I was interested in. So not just astrology mm-hmm. and moon cycles and all that, but they also studied like plant life cycles and seed germination and certain chickens and like different pieces that you would think about from homesteading and different things. But what was cool and what I saw last year was that with my youngest, she's always been, I don't want to help. I don't want to help. I just want to do my video games, right? And when she studied tomatoes, she actually started tomatoes in the house with the grow light. And then she's like, can we move these outside? And I was like, it's still March. We can't move them outside yet. We just got to keep growing and keep growing. <laughs> They're sensitive. Um, <laughs> they'll freeze <laughs> if we put them out there. Uh, but now she's like, okay, I picked – she went out and we had pole beans last year for the first time and she picked all the pole beans and she loved – and we've got this jar of pole beans. And now this winter, she's like, when are we going to make chili with my beans? Like she's now oh. owned the produce, oh. which is so fun. That's, it is. It is. I mean, like future farmers of America right here, you know, it's like learning <laughs> learning and cultivating. I mean, oh, I, I'm – I'm sprouting, uh, I'm sprouting some sprouts in my kitchen, you know, it's the middle of winter and, you know, we, we can now do a lot of this indoors because so many, um, companies and people have figured out easier ways to, to have that cultivated indoors. So, so we still get our greens in the winter, um, and, and our, our sulfur, our sulfuraphane from all those sprouts. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. When you are on at the botanical gardens or like I said earlier before you even started like in your own yard or your growing area mm-hmm. what are some of your favorite things to pick and to cook right away um well I I'm an herb girl I love herbs so rosemary thyme oregano sage and uh mint and of course of course of course basil basil. I, I dream of large basil plants and I just want to roll around in them and smell fresh basil all day. <laughs> but um, I just made a uh, chimichurri sauce uh, or just an herb sauce for a dish that I'm doing and it is full of parsley and basil and garlic and you know and so you're taking these things and just the easiest things, aromatics and uh, just green food and that green food full of chlorophyll and things that help detoxify the body um, as well as flavor your food. And just like, Oh my gosh. Um, you know, garlic and olive oil already is amazing. Yeah. You do garlic, olive oil, you know, parsley and basil, you know, it's just, it just grows that way. And then of course I do my little cherry, um, cherry tomatoes or uh, uh, grape tomatoes. So, okay. Do you grow those? Yeah. I do. Awesome. Yeah. And they're, this is so weird, but I just had two rogue, no, three rogue cherry tomatoes on my plant that I cultivated last week. Oh it's, my God. It, in December. Like, it was the weirdest thing. And they tasted great. They were just, awesome. we just hadn't had a big freeze yet. So yeah. now we have. So I picked okay. them actually weirdly. I, I, um, intuitively I picked them the day before it froze outside. Ah. Yeah. So I like, th- threw them in with our dish and then, you know. Okay. Was- so I have a question now when it comes to like herb preparation, mm-hmm. um, when you're storing them, are you storing yeah. them in the refrigerator? Are you storing oh. them in a jar of water out? on the counter like we hear all these different ways to store your herbs okay uh i should go grab it because this is like i mean i it's it's right here if we have um here talk and it's talk five for feet a away from me yes. <laughs> okay talk for a second i'll come i'll show you exactly you're gonna love this hold on this is awesome all right so this is gonna be the magic secret from somebody that's got expertise and not only working at the botanical gardens train chef and how to store our herbs because that is something I think the storing of the herbs, whether you get them from the produce farmer's market or you pick them or they come from the grocery store, it's like, how do I store them so you get the longest life out of them? I think I have mastered the cilantro parsley dilemma. Okay. So when you go to the grocery store, you get one of these 
sometimes. I try oh, yeah, to avoid the green, green bag. I, I try to avoid any bag. If if I come in the grocery store and I see you put an avocado in one of these, I'm going to come and tap you on the shoulder. <laughs> I think um, we might be shop alike. I just throw everything uh-huh. in the bottom of the cart <laughs> without the bag. I mean, I bring my returnable, I mean, my reusable bag and, you know, like I'm, I have a bag problem. Um, I have too many is what I, um, <laughs> like reusables. Okay. So you put your, let's just say parsley or cilantro, very similar, put it in the bag and do not tie a knot in the bag. If you tie a okay. knot in the bag, you can't reuse it. I, yeah. Especially the ones with the avocado in it. Oh. Avocado has its own skin, just FYI. So, okay. and we don't eat it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let it breathe. Okay, so you get home, you rinse, you keep the avocado. I mean the, I don't even know what I'm saying. Uh, the parsley bound. I've got some okay. organic organic parsley. Keep it bound, just like it was in the grocery store. I run it under water, shake it a little bit, and then I put it in my jar, my ball jar with okay. some water. And I put the cilantro and the parsley side by side. Oh. I, yeah. I might and trim the, the ends. Water. Okay. Yes. And you want to make sure your ends are in the water, of course. Um, so, you know, and you can change out this water every couple of days. Take that bag because you didn't tie a knot in it. You can reuse it. And... Put the bag oh. over your jar. Okay. Twist it. I twist it and un- flip it under, and it sits in the refrigerator. So uh, there is no reason to ever lay this bag down in the refrigerator with herbs in it because they will. Even if you wrap it in a paper towel, they'll, they'll, they they get all go, yucky. Yeah. So this yeah. keeps them hydrated at the same time, keeps them protected from all those other crazy things in your refrigerator um, and keeps them really pure. And then if you don't tie a knot in and I just tucked it under, when you go to use your herbs. It's like a magic you, trick. You have fresh <laughs> herb. Mm. Okay. So okay. that is the secret. It's a that combination is- of the fridge and the jar of water. Yeah, with and the bag. The reusable okay. bag to cover. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you got to keep a little, uh, keep a little freshness on hand all the time. You can use it to um, enhance your dishes, garnish your dishes, make it instead of flowers on the table. You've got herbs on the table. You, you could use it as a centerpiece. I mean, who doesn't I love, love that? Every, everything green. Everything green. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, so those are herbs. You've talked about like your favorite ones to cook with. Mm-hmm. What? Um, what is the most unusual thing you've ever picked and cooked? Uh, uh, pineapple guava. Oh. Pine- we have pineapple guava at the Botanical Garden. Um, I never knew what to do with it. Most of people uh, make jellies and jams and things with it, and I don't really do a lot of jellies and jams. So um, I, I just I, – I don't know why. I just don't. Um, uh, but uh, I made an applesauce with this pineapple guava because it, it – it, the consistency of it kind of gives it that jelly jam, perfect flavoring. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I put it in applesauce and kind of turned out pretty good. Um, that was interesting. Um, we we do um, uh, what are the uh, uh, did a lot of figs, figs at the botanical okay. garden. So we have it, and and I've been there since 2010. Um, and when they opened the edible garden part of the botanical garden and they planted little baby fig trees and now they're big fig trees. So every year they get bigger, they give more fruit. And if the birds don't get them, the people reach up and get them. So, uh, I make a lot of stuff with fig. Um, the fig and onion bruschetta is probably my biggest hit. Um, that sounds amazing. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's quite amazing. And, um, it's, uh, yeah, just sweet onion. Um, and then, uh, see figs come in, in about August and September and then they're, they're like, yeah. here in, here in, in Georgia anyway. Um, in California, probably a little longer, uh, window for that, but, uh, and you get fresh figs, 
you walk into Whole Foods or, or whatever out in California, you walk into Whole Foods and they have this mound of fresh figs and you're just like, you're in like fig heaven, you know, Cleopatra liked, oh liked figs, you know, because it was good for her complexion. Well, are they high in magnesium? Like a day? They're high. Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Oh, uh, the whole, the whole list. Um, and they're, for the most part, they're really not that sweet. So they're not super, uh, like a date is really sweet. Mm -hmm. A fig is kind of like half that sweetness. So, um, when I combine it, uh, with that onion and a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and of course I top everything with goat cheese, but, uh, and put it on a little bruschetta. It's like, Oh my it, gosh. Yeah. You can't stop eating it. It's that's, that's, that's usually the problem. You just can't stop eating. Okay. So I know what our <laughs> listeners are going to be like, so where do we get this recipe? So Oh, yeah. yeah. I have those on my website, healthyeating101.com. And that is uh, a, a bunch of recipes on there. A lot of them are from the botanical garden over the years. And uh, just, uh, I just recently made a, um, a shredded Brussels sprout dish. You just saute um, some shallots and garlic and uh, shredded Brussels sprouts and top that with goat cheese and toasted pecans. And, you know, so you're, you're taking stuff out of the garden, just, you know, my best advice for uh, trying to cultivate more fruits and vegetables from the garden into your everyday lifestyle is focus on one. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, whether it's eggplant or the Brussels sprouts or, you know, the herbs or, you know, just kind of like highlight one thing and then you can create the recipe around it or, um, it's just the simpler flavors, the better. Yeah. I think, I think they're actually more memorable that way because that way we're tasting it and mm -hmm. we're, we're getting to know it. And then, um, I think that leads to other recipes that you can, um, make other dishes, you know, I mean, how many, how many, here's a good question for you. How many cauliflower recipes have you done in the past <laughs> two years? Um, a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Lately, it's um, either like, a, I don't know if you're familiar with like Indian food, like they do a chicken 65. I've been mm. playing with like a cauliflower 65 or like a cauliflower um, tahini and hot sauce and just kind of, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I've, I, I'm so good. I'm. I'm BFF with cauliflower right and now. And I had cauliflower rice today for lunch oh, and there you instead go. of regular rice. So, yeah. yeah. It, it lives all over my life. <laughs> um, did you, one, no, uh, go for it. I was going to say, did you grow uh, bigger vegetables like that? Uh, um, so that is the interesting thing. Uh, our garden has always been in our backyard since we've been on this property about 12 years, I realized, uh, this spring. Wow. And it started out in a four by eight. Right. So yeah. two pieces of, or four pieces of pine and dump some dirt in. Um, as of last summer, we have 350 square feet of just what? veggie. And oh, then we added my blackberry vines and red raspberry vines. And I added two apple trees and a cherry tree last year. And then we added a whole new kind of like a green witch herbal garden. Some oh. people would call it a Hecate's garden. Right. So okay. it's got sage and lavender and chamomile and yarrow and all these different medicinal herbs that I use to make teas and fun little yeah. bath products. Yeah. But what is really cool and I love is that it you don't have to have that kind of space, kind of what right. you were just saying, Megan, right? Mm -hmm. You can get a little two by two and plant four or five different kinds of herbs in it. Um, whether it's in a little pot on your patio or you get a little garden box at the garden store, you you want to get out your woodworking tools. You never know. Yeah. Right? And build yourself a little box. Uh, but you could add like that one item. Is it, you know, a cauliflower or yeah. are you going to grow a kale? Are you going to grow – I've tried to grow Brussels sprouts two years. And <laughs> because they need such a long season before you actually get the Brussels, mm -hmm. it's so hard in Chicago. Yeah. It doesn't get – we don't have a long enough hot season. So – I am. Uh, we're building a greenhouse in March. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Much. Oh, of my goodness. Of course you are. Of course we are. Uh, I drew plans and uh, it's like all the wood and everything is loaded in Home Depot. I just got to click the button and they'll deliver. Oh, my so gosh. So we have a detached garage on our property and our property used to have an in-ground swimming pool in like the 60s and 70s. And so there's this concrete area where all of that pipes and filters and stuff would have sat and there's nothing uh. on the concrete. 
and that's attached to the garage. So we're going to do like a lean-to off the garage. Oh. So I only have to do three walls of the greenhouse. Wow. And so that's a big project that I'm going to do this spring. Um, oh, but my god! hopefully gosh. I can grow Brussels sprouts and a few other things that need a warmer climate longer in a pot. Yeah. And we'll give it another try. Um, one of my favorite things to grow is carrots because mm. – I leave them in the ground till the first snow wow. and they get super sweet the longer they're really? there. Oh. My neighbors laugh because you put on snow boots to go pull the carrots, but that's just <laughs> my thing. Um, cucumbers. The tinier oh. the cucumber, I think the better. Oh, I love I love making quick pickles with those. I'm like, Shh. Yeah. Oh, so and they're so easy for people. Like, I don't yeah. think people realize how easy it is to take a tiny little two, three inch cucumber and add some garlic and some salt water and just let it sit for a few days on the counter. Mm -hmm. So easy. Yeah. 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 Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Do you have a garden at home as well? Uh, um, I have a patio, a little patio garden. So all my stuff is in pots because I'm on the second floor. So um, yeah, my, my friend's my my former neighbors actually uh they moved to a new property and they they're they're the neighbors that always had the gargantuan gardens like you're talking about so i lived across the street from that and you know they'd say oh hey megan can you can you water our tomatoes and all our plants while we're away on vacation i'm like sure and so we'd all get a glass of wine and take turns in the cul-de-sac this is a few years ago and <laughs> uh, we'd meet on their driveway and we'd all be drinking wine and spraying their, uh, tomatoes and various, you know, cucumbers and whatnot. And, and, uh, we're like, uh, they said, Oh, make sure you eat the tomatoes if any come ripe, you know, cause that's the thing to do. And, uh, so we did, and it happened to be in the middle of July, in the middle of July in Georgia, it's tomato season. Oh yeah. <laughs> and Lo and behold, all those tomatoes came in. I'm like, okay, well, we got to have a party. So they were still on vacation. We had a party and everything was tomato. This We invited all the other neighbors <laughs> and texted them the photos. And they're like, uh, yeah, I don't think we'll go on vacation in July anymore. So like, that is awesome. Yeah. So but they have a greenhouse now in their oh, new place. So I, okay. Know, so when you come down next time, we'll yeah. go over to her house and, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It's oh so cool. my gosh. It, yeah. it reminds me of last summer in my neighborhood. Um, me and a friend of mine, we garden together and we kind of trade produce all the time. But she went to Europe for three months oh. um, for June, July, and August. Oh, and wow. The deal was water whatever, pick whatever. And her blackberry patch is <laughs> about 20 feet long. So oh. I was calling people similarly like, Come pick blackberries with me and I'll make you the jelly. <laughs> like, I can't even pick all of these myself. Oh my God. Oh, and she had I currants and so we made currant jelly and then oh. blackberry vodka because that's the thing to do in our neighborhood is to do fermented natural vodkas. Oh my. Yes. Um, yeah. Wow. What did – so you put the blackberries in there and just let you it – You put uh, the blackberries in – a ball jar, mm -hmm. and you cover them with spiritus from Europe, mm -hmm. so yep. 190 proof. Okay. And then they sit for about three weeks, and then you stomp them, right? Just like yeah. that. And then – so you could use a wooden mullet or whatever. And then you put them through a cheese strainer. Okay. And then you put that back in the jar with, like, simple syrup and – some more fresh fruit, and Ooh, yeah. you could add cinnamon or vanilla bean, and then you let it sit for like six months. Oh yeah, yeah. That's my guy makes uh, lemon cello because he's because he's Italian. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> anyway, that sits for with those lemon peels and everything, and just yeah, six months. I would say actually, we kind of forgot about him in the closet where he was storing them. And we're like, oh, I think these are ready. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's yeah. so much though I think that we can do with like just fresh whether it's herbs and that's the other thing we want to try this year is making like a lemon balm infused yeah. oh, out, um and then love, love lemon balm I got olive it. oil was another one that oh. I went last year unscrewed a cap and just went out in the garden and just started picking like the oregano and the parsley and just shoving it in the bottle oh, and yeah. screwed the lid back on yeah I mean, um yeah I was like, 
So it's so exciting. Yeah, so many flavors and so little time, right? Um, it doesn't it doesn't actually take that much time. So I, I tell people too when when they're learning to cook, um, and I tell them, you know, you put, you know, if you know if you want to make quinoa, all you have to do is know how to boil water. I said if you turn on the oven to a temperature and you put something in the oven, the oven is doing the cooking. The heat is doing the cooking. You're doing nothing. You're just waiting. So you know you can you can kind of break it down that way. So yeah. you don't have to think, oh, I was, you know, slaving over a hot stove or something, you know. Tell me so. about some of the live classes you've got coming up for people that are in the South or people that might want to leave Chicago because it's winter and come to the South. Yeah. I, uh, <laughs> yeah. Florida is one state away. Uh, <laughs> so, which is the warmest in, uh, in this part of. Um, it's about five because, hours, I think, because we yeah. just drove through Atlanta. <laughs> Oh, oh, did you? Where did you um, go? Thanksgiving. Oh, we went to New Smyrna Beach, which is a little south of Daytona. Oh, oh I was on the opposite side. I was in uh, Destin. So, okay. Yeah. Jeez. We could have, you know, thrown up flares. Um, <laughs> and we um, uh, are doing some c- cooking classes. Uh, I do them at olive oil and vinegar stores, um, which that have uh, these beautiful kitchens that they've uh, built out. And uh, I can, you know, usually do fit, I think, you know, good 20 people in both. Um, I go to St. Simon's Island. Uh, I go to just areas around here and we're, we're just, you know, right now it's all new year, new you kind of menus. Um, everybody's really gang, uh, uh, gung ho about, you know, eating healthy for the new year. And this, like this year it's going to stick. <laughs> but I eat more vegetables. It does. I mean, it's just like, it, it's like, I, you know, you're not going to get out of this life without eating vegetables. And, and if you do, boy, I don't know what's in the water, but just, you know, it, you got to eat vegetables. You just got to. So I, I, I was that kid. I had no problem eating vegetables though. So I remember my sister, you, you know, trying to hide them in her napkin and throw it away. But, um, I, I didn't tell she told on herself. So, I don't Oh know. my gosh. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it, I, I was, I was really lucky to really like, uh, fruits and vegetables my whole life. So, um, you know, and all of those 85 years I have right now, no. 85 years, <laughs> you're not old. 85, by the way, if you're listening to this, <laughs> you're not cheese looks really good. I'll have a cheese having, you know? Yeah. So anyway, but it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's all a practice and it's a very easy practice. Um, and one of my favorite things to do all summer long in particular is to go out on the patio with my coffee. I have a little chair out there and I talk to my plants. I literally do. I and love it. They, they are the happiest plants out there. And, you know, they're just blowing in the wind, doing their thing. And, you know, and uh, I move them around every once in a while because mine are all in pots and, and just, you know, kind of like, okay, what's going on with this plant? Am I, you know, and this year they did even better because I did rearrange their order. Um, and it looked better for me too, from my perspective, just sitting there and enjoying my coffee in the morning, a little, little sunshine. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all about taking care of that inner and the outer and, wow. and, 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 and this year we all have this one, you know, let, oh, let's take care of our brain too. You yes. know? So, yeah. And, um, I just, I rub my herbs and, and I just, I, I really try to just, um, enjoy every minute of it. I'll clip them. I don't clip them too much. I'm, I'm kind of din- uh, stingy on clipping. Cause I'm like, I don't want I you to go away. <laughs> I so you know, agree. It's yeah. almost until they predict the frost that I'm like, just grow and grow. Yeah. And then the, <laughs> they predict frost and I'm like, all right, we're going to give you a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, like they're going to call us like crazy plant ladies, but uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. So I, I, I really do enjoy um, just being around plants and at the botanical garden. Um, so lucky because I don't have to plant them at the botanical. I just cultivate them and create the recipes. So, um, you know, just creating whatever's growing in the garden. There, there is a recipe. If you can't think of anything, Google it (laughs) and, and something will pop up, Uh, but uh, go to healthyeating101.com and you can put in a little search 
in the search bar there. If you know, if you put in eggplant and all my eggplant dishes will hopefully show up. If you know. Awesome. So I have so. one last question. Sure. How do you cultivate healthy guts every day? Oh, well, if I get, um, if I have my kimchi avocado toast, uh, which makes it a great day, um, I do take a probiotic at night before I go to bed. Um, hopefully, um, I won't be full. I'm trying to eat less later at night because over the holidays, you just kind of like, oh, you know, oh, I'll get back on it in January. Anyway, um, taking a probiotic, um, uh, I'll, I'll still do yogurt. So I do do uh, some dairy. I make my own yogurt too. Um, it's exciting. Yeah. Oh, so fun. Um, cause it's so fast and easy. I'm like, why, why the food industry is cleaning up man. <laughs> um, and then, um, uh, yoga starting, um, you know, just started back doing yoga again and just kind of just, you know, breathing and just thinking about, um, the, 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 the route of food, um, a lot of soups, um, will break down that food so it doesn't have to work so hard to digest. Therefore all the probiotics and the, the gut can do its thing without gastronomic distress. Um, but it's, uh, it's, it's forever. Oh, and kombucha, if it's a really fun day, I'll, you know, like that's that, well, you know, we'll, we'll go walk over to Whole Foods and okay, and get a kombucha. We're so cool, yeah. So, <laughs> but like, um, you know, just just thing, anything that has probiotics, um, I I I really do look out for that. And um, I, I we we don't have we nobody probably gets too much probiotics in their everyday life. So, completely agree. But, but yeah, I'm, I love the kim, spicy kimchi. Oh my gosh. I, I just, I crave it. So it's really weird. When I was younger, I used to crave more sweets and now I'm craving more, um, like probiotic food. Oh, interesting. That, 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 yeah. So, I, I mean, it's like that to me, when you have that kind of craving, that's your body really telling yep. you, yeah, it's, it's time to be consuming that. So yeah. Yeah. That might I, I mean, I did, I need to make my own kimchi. However, the I don't have a garage. Atta- I mean, my garage is downstairs. Like, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> I don't want it to um, permeate oh. the, pre- the premises. I, I used to make it, and I'm like, wow. Mm-hmm. People come in, they're like, what you got going on here? <laughs> like, I don't. I don't have a separate space to make my kimchi or you know, or cabbage or, or sauerkraut or anything. So makes sense. Yeah. Um, we have a kombucha that grows oh, in the kitchen yeah. and, okay. and the days where you take his cover off and do stuff, it's yeah. aromic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like a health food store. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Awesome. So cool. Thank you so much. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. I loved all of this. And for those of you that are interested in finding more out about Megan, attending one of her cooking classes, we'll drop information in the show notes below this so you can click the links and hop over to find those recipes um, or find out where you're going to be at next. Yeah, we do online cooking classes as well. So uh, like a corporate, like if you're trying to, uh, do like a corporate something with your, with your team. Uh, we we've done cooking classes online. So. Oh, how fun. Yeah. And we can go either way where they can just sit back and watch it or they can get the ingredients ahead of time and and, cook with and cook along. Yeah. So I love it. Um, I actually have been at multiple events at Sir La Table prior to everything going remote. All right. And so that's really cool to know that you offer that service. Oh yeah. It's, it's fun. And you know, I don't, whenever I wear a mask, my comedy just goes downhill. I don't know why. So, so I like doing virtual where you can actually see my lips moving and what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My jokes don't go over so well with a mask. On. But, you know. Makes sense. Awesome. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, honey. Bye. Great to see you. Bye. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Share with me what your favorite part was and share when you try this new way to preserve your herbs with covering them with the produce bag, putting them in the refrigerator, keeping them in fresh water. 
truly a secret that we got from Megan McCarthy today on Cultivating Guts. Ask me any questions. I'm here for you, and I am excited to see all of your benefits and the dishes you cook up from Megan's recipes. Satnam, I love you guys. So if you love this episode, remember to share it with your friends and send it to anyone who may love this inspiration and information that we shared. To get my newest book, Hacking Your Health, The Three-Week Detox, you can go to Amazon, barnesandnoble.com, or anywhere books are sold. And also, I want to let you know that we have a brand new live event, online live event, uh, tomorrow. So if you're listening to this podcast on the day that it comes out, January 18th, our live event is in the evening on Thursday, on Wednesday, January 19th, we are doing a webinar. It's a masterclass on visioning for your upcoming 2022 garden. And you can get the link in the show notes or you can go to www.cultivatingguts.com and sign up for that free online class with me. And we're going to talk about envisioning your garden and getting started for 2022. And we have some special bonuses and special announcements we're going to be making at the end of that live online event. So again, if you're interested in working together and planning out your garden for 2022, I'd love to work with you. You can again go over to www.cultivatingguts.com and you'll see everything you need to get started with our gardening masterclass, which the price just dropped to $67. And you will also be able to see how to schedule a private consultation with me where we spend 90 minutes drawing out your garden, planning it together, and making sure that we get you set up for a wonderful, wonderful gardening year of 2022. 